What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now as you probably just saw, today we are taking a look at our CES 2019 build we have done for Zotac. Now the interesting thing with this build, you've probably seen we've done previous builds for Zotac in the past of CES and for Combutex. Uh, those builds have all been based directly on Zotac. So those ones have a full in-depth yellow theme. Everything is yellow and uh, we theme it around that. But this one is for Zotac Gaming. You can see up here the Zotac Gaming. I've thrown on sort of a Zotac logo here. Now this is their slightly sort of different, uh, different type of theme. And this is what they're bringing out on a lot of their new uh, RTX video cards. Now this theme, I must say, is a hell of a lot harder to work with than something like doing a yellow or a full red or a full green build. This theme is more sort of black, silver and grey. Uh, it's really hard to sort of make this stand out, uh, especially when you've done a yellow build. Someone can say, oh yeah, yellow is normally associated with Zotac. But doing this, not many people, probably still people now will be like, oh, that just looks like um, a standard build with these colors. But I've tried to do the best I can to sort of theme it to their Zotac gaming. Now, as you can see, the main thing this build is based around, of course, is their video card. Now, this is the RTX 2080 Amp Extreme, and you can see it standing up there. So Zotac hit me up recently, probably about uh, a month to two months ago, to do a build for their CES suite uh, to showcase this GPU. So most times when I get asked to do a build, the first thing I think about is the case. I was going to go with a completely different type of case, but due to very, very strict uh, 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 quantities they had, I had to sort of leave that one behind because it was going to be too tight to try and get one in time because this has to be shipped out ASAP. I've literally just finished this. Uh, today is, I think, December 7. I need to get this out ASAP to beat the Christmas rush to get it over in uh, Vegas for CES. So then I hit up Inwin and they sent over a Inwin X-Frame 2.0. So I want to thank them for sending this out. Uh, it was the black and red one. Um, I have painted the black bars up here and here. I really just had to, because no way was I going to have red in this build. Except in saying that, the power light down the bottom I have added down there is red, but that's not too bad. That kind of looks all right. Now, so first things I did with the case, as I said, first thing was painted this black here. Then it might be a bit hard to see, but the whole tray along here, the sort of the motherboard tray, I completely ripped that out. Now what Inwin have done, they've added this huge cast five millimeter thick base. Now this is what everything sort of straps to. This thing is solid as hell and it actually sort of pops in and sort of slits in the whole actual chassis. So I unscrewed that, about 10 screws, took that out because I just didn't want all the holes everywhere. I just wanted a nice clean pallet that then I could add to. So I took this out, I then ran, I think, two millimeter uh, aluminium around it. I simply just traced around that, cut that out, slotted that back in, countersunk the screws back in, and now I've got this nice, fresh uh, pallet to work on. Now this material I used is two mil aluminium, but it is clear anodized. I really like that effect you get with clear anodized. It just gives us, even this bit here, is the same type of bit, clear anodized, there's no paint, there's no vinyl wrap, there's nothing on it. It just gives it a really nice look. The only problem with clear anodized is when you bend it, and like a bending break, it does kind of tear the finish on top. So this uh, GPU bracket holder that I made up is also clear anodized. That's uh, three mil clear anodized, but I was gonna leave it the clear color, but it was all bent here, but then it tore the coating on top. So then I just had to cover that with vinyl wrap. Now I wanna give a shout out to my mate Tim, who has access to a metal fab shop. Now without the right tools, there is no way anyone can bend three millimeter aluminium. I had to use the proper bending brakes and so on to get these bends right. 
and um, without that doing it by hand I'll cover the back a little bit later on but I did the back um, by hand when I was at home later on and that's with 1.2 maybe 1.6 millimeter aluminium and I tried bending that at home just on like a table with some timber and that was hellishing hard just trying to do that so trying to do 3 mil by hand would just be impossible. Now moving on to some of the other aspects of the build, so as I said main thing I wanted to do is showcase the GPU. I didn't want to just put it in a standard case uh, then either horizontally or vertically mount the GPU. I wanted to do it in a way that the first thing you saw when you walked into Zotac suite was this huge whopping big GPU. I will turn this on later on because there is a heap of RGB that runs around here and runs around the bottom. So I kind of threw up some diagrams. Um, I was kind of surprised once I started throwing hardware on the Inwin X-Frame, how quickly it sort of took up the space. Uh, at first I thought this case was much bigger, but uh, then again, it sort of started to consume a lot of space. So I had to work on doing layers. I couldn't have, at first I was gonna have the motherboard on one angle, then the GPU next to it, but I thought, hey, there's no way I can fit this on. Cause I didn't really wanna have too much protruding out of the sides, out of the top. I wanted to try and keep it and put it back in its original box to ship it over. So then I worked on doing layers. I thought, hey, why don't I kind of hide half of the motherboard? I don't really need to show, showcase a heap of the motherboard. I wanted to showcase the RAM and then I can put the GPU sort of diagonally on top of it. So the motherboard is sitting sort of uh, horizontally and we've covered all the PCI Express slots because we don't really need to show that. And the beauty with that is I was able to hide the PCI riser card in the back here. So the board is the ASRock X299 OC formula, a really nice board. I've used that a few times in builds before. And then you can sort of just see the half of it. You can really just see the main good stuff on the board. We've got the uh, CPU block from Heat Killer. I also want to give a shout out to Watercool Heat Killer who sponsored the uh, radiator, the CPU block and the res. Really nice components, especially this res uh, pump combo. It's actually glass, full glass res, and it's just something, uh, something different how it's done. I love how the uh, top cap just sort of twists and comes off and then you can fill it up, which is a little neat idea. And then of course the RAM, I really wanted to showcase that. That is uh, G-Skill's new Trident Z uh, Royale, that's the RGB, and I've gone with the silver instead of the gold for this one. Now, moving on to this bracket, uh, this was probably the most trickiest part, trying to design uh, this bracket to sort of work together with the case and then to hold the GPU. So as I said, three millimeter aluminum, it's actually got sort of a right angle uh, sort of a lip on here which uh, secures it to the case with M4 bolts and then it was a matter of just uh, strapping or putting the GPU on. Now unfortunately a lot of times when I mount video cards like this I've done a few builds where it sits flat on cases I can normally find holes in the back plate where I can take the black back plate off I can put my uh, put like riser screws in then I can put the back plate back on and then screw it on but this one had no spare holes I couldn't do anything, so unfortunately I had to screw through the back plate with four holes because uh, the back plate is raised up, so I was able to fit four, uh, four screws in that comes out and you can just see it is slightly raised up and then it poked, poked through the holes and then I just screwed in by nuts through the other side. And then you can see on this side here, I have added a tube just for aesthetics, which is in the loop as well. It just comes out of the radiator and then up the top and then out the back. So everything does pass through to the back. But yeah, this bracket ended up being very, very strong. Uh, it should be fine for shipping, but it really just gives it that um, an interesting design, sort of that wicked look to it. And then I added a little bracket to cover up that uh, PCI Express riser cable. Uh, if you're wondering, CPU is a i9-7900X, so nothing too fancy, but still a pretty nice CPU. Uh, then I've gone with some RGB in-wind borer, uh, sorry, RGB Lian Lee borer fans, and that just sort of complements with the uh, the rest of the components, because I want to try and do this, so I'm not sure how Zotac will want to run this, whether they want to run uh, RGB only on the GPU, or they want to run RGB on the fans and the RAM as well, but I'll leave that up to them and how they want to customize it. But I'll turn it on in a sec and you can see how the RGB on the fans really sort of uh, bounces off that back clear anodized uh, aluminum on the back. All right, now moving on 
to, uh, you might be wondering what this power supply is. Uh, these ones come with a lot of Inwin Signature Series cases. Uh, so this is a 1065 watt and it does have a little light inside. I've got that turned off. The light is orange by default. I could have probably ripped it apart and changed it, but um, I did decide just to leave it off. And I did have to paint a lot of the power supply because it did come red. But yeah, I've uh, left it as is, added some uh, mirror uh, stainless underneath that just bounces off the rest of the system so if you look on an angle you can actually see everything down below and then I got with some really nice cable mod sleeved pro cables and I must say their new bridge cables you can get for their GPUs are just divine just the way how they uh, are joined together if you're not familiar with the bridge cables simply just uh, the cable comb joins the two together so if you have a six or an eight pin the cable uh, the bridge sorry the uh, cable comb just joins both of them which makes it a nicer, a nice clean look. Instead of having two separate cables, then you gotta try and uh, sort of join them together and run them around the back. Whereas this one, the cable comb does all the job for you. Uh, moving on towards the back. Um, the back was quite interesting. I really wasn't know, uh, really wasn't quite sure what to do here. I wanted to make a cover of some sort, but I didn't want to completely cover the whole back because as you can see, you've got the tubing is quite neat. Uh, the pass-throughs for the runs, we've got one, two, three runs here. And then this is just, this is some sleeving for the fan cables. But uh, I also wanted to uh, show off the sponsors as well by putting some logos on the back because I sort of had a feeling that normally when you do a build for Zotac, they'll also take the build to their uh, party on one of the nights. They have quite a large party where all their sponsors come together and all the media comes together. And I remember last time, one of the times I had to build there and it's actually kind of out in the open. So I wanted to make sure that the whole system 360 degrees looked really neat. So I came up with this cover and this is the one I bent from home, uh, all this uh, material, aluminium. I think it's 1.2 or 1.6 mil. And this was really hard, just trying to bend this uh, by yourself without any tools. So I sort of just did some diagrams, worked on cardboard and then just came up with this design then vinyl wrapped it. Then I've added some uh, RGB strips up in this one and in this one, and it gives a nice subtle glow. It probably comes a little bit overexposed on video, but um, yeah, it does have a really nice uh, look to it. So I'll turn it on. Um, as I said earlier, I added a little power button. Uh, when I designed this, I just sort of designed this cover as is, and then I had this whole area down the bottom sort of spare, and I thought, hey, why don't I put a uh, vandal switch in there so then I can use it as a power button. Then I added some vinyl decals around it and so on. So we'll just turn this on, and you can see, see that GPU does, I don't know, it goes yellow at first, and then it goes to its RGB. So I've set this as straight RGB, but you can do a whole lot of stuff in their new Firestorm software. All right, so you can see the fans. I'm not sure how well you can see that bouncing off the back of the motherboard tray, but it gives it a really nice uh, look like it's sort of a waterfall of RGB. So not too much RGB, the whole system's not going crazy. Just the fans down below, you've got that gorgeous g score memory. Right, and one thing you're probably running is the coolant. Yes, I did go with the Primo Chill Vu. Now uh, this will only be used for about a week during uh, a week during CES, so it will hold up then. I have run the appropriate uh, prepping. I ran their sys prep for, uh, their Primo prep for 72 hours, everything like that. So I've done that before for show builds and I've always managed to get a week out of, um, out of that coolant, even longer, but I've never really run the coolant any longer than that. I just use it for, uh, for the shows that they go to. Now moving on to the back. And it is pretty cool how this X-Frame can just spin around like that perfect case for a show like this. Like they can, uh, the Zotac reps can just sort of move it around, do whatever they want, providing the cable doesn't uh, get pulled too tight. And now you can see the RGB coming off there, down there, and then up there. So they might want to change this to white or so on, but um, it's really up to them. Spin it around. And then of course, I've gone with the uh, Bits Power Fittings. So this is their, um, their black nickel sort of one. It's sort of darker than, than the chrome. They call it black sparkle. And then I've gone with a uh, 14 millimeter, uh, this is chromed brass tubing. Really nice tubing, really easy to cut. You just use the standard PETG uh, cutters you use for your sort of plastic tube, but you can still cut the, uh, the brass or copper tube as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I didn't have time to do a time lapse build. This has to literally go straight out now. I didn't really have time to pull it all, all down again and build it uh, again. But yeah, uh, anyway, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank all the sponsors who helped out with this. And I really wanna thank Zotac for giving me the chance to do a build uh, for CES 2019. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.